According to Statista, 560,000 new pieces of malware are discovered every day in 2021. Hello judges and anyone watching this video, my name is Derek Peng, a student at Troy High School, and today I'm presenting my research on visual malware classification using a visual transformer. So the problem that I'm trying to address is the existing techniques used for malware classification fall short to a couple of flaws. One of the biggest techniques is static malware analysis, and this involves using uh, detecting known malware signatures in the files that you're trying to check whether they're malware or not. And so the most popular example of this is what's called Yara, Yara rules. This stands for yet another recursive algorithm, and it looks for known signatures in the different paths and uh, different malware samples that it has. And the reason why it's so popular is because of how robust it is, how many samples it has. However, it can fall short to obfuscation where malware samples often hide themselves through stuff like zipping themselves uh, through techniques that can basically hide its actual code. And so to combat this, dynamic malware analysis techniques are used where you can simulate the malware in a controlled environment where it can't actually uh, hurt anyone. However, these methods are time consuming, resource intensive, often needing uh, a human or expert to oversee it and look at what its output is. There's a clear need for more efficient and more robust classification techniques. And so this is where my research comes in. The visual part of my solution for our classification is the actual data itself. You can see in the bottom left hand corner a sample of the data that I'm actually classifying. So my approach is to use vision transformers, a machine learning technique, to sort these images. And you might be asking, what are these images? So this data set, the malimage data set, is, transforms malware samples into grayscale images of white and black. So the white represents zeros and the black represents ones in the binary data of the malware samples. And so by converting these malware binaries into grayscale images, this method can classify those images, making it much faster than traditional techniques that involve dynamic malware analysis, while also bypassing obfuscation because of the power to recognize patterns even through obfuscation. And so I chose to use vision transformers because of their novelty and recently discovered potential in being resistant to what's called data and concept drift, where uh, as malware evolves, it's more and more difficult to uh, analyze and classify the newer models, or sorry, newer samples. And it can also be interpretable. And what this, this is really important because experts want to know why a model would have come to a certain conclusion. In this research, I developed a CNN model to act as a baseline and a vision transformer model to uh, analyze the malimage data set, a set of 9,339 images that are Windows malware. And so my methodology was to use my vision transformer to analyze the malware samples. And so I built it on top of what is called region VIT. I chose to use region VIT instead of a traditional vi VIT or vision transformer because it can achieve a similar accuracy while training less. And this is really helpful to me because I am still a student. I do not pay the bills. I have to ask my parents, hey, may I spend some money to train uh, these models on these AWS EC2 instances? And so, yeah, it's really important for me, but also real companies, whether or not they have to dedicate huge amounts of computational resources to training their models. And so, not to get into the two technical aspects, but I chose my learning rate of 0 0.003 for my Atom Optimizer in order to, uh, and I did this using what's called a training loop. So I went through all the possible settings on a certain scale, going one by one, to figure out which one would achieve uh, the highest accuracy. And so you can see my results over here. Uh, overall, the model I designed had an accuracy of 97.8 on the testing split of the data set. This was really great because my goal behind this research was to prove that vision transformers were feasible and able to provide accurate um, 
accurate results. And so that answers my research question number one. Is it possible to develop and train an accurate vision transformer model? Yes. However, for research question number two, I had to go into something else. And so I went into, I developed a CNN baseline model in order to compare it to the vision transformer model and see what's the upsides, what's the downsides to each one. The CNN model is much more lightweight. It involves a lot less parameters, which means it runs a lot faster because there's less computation needed. My uh, vision transform model had about 57 million parameters, while my CNN model only had, or convolutional neural network, only had about 1.8 million. So they were able to achieve about the same accuracy with my CNN model able to achieve 97.6, while my VIT achieved 97.8. And this is up there with the uh, state of the art, which uses larger networks like Inception V3, developed by Google, ResNets, etc. And so uh, this also dives into my second research question because to consider these, uh, the trade off, yes, CNNs classify faster with about the same accuracy. However, VITs are still viable because it was able to classify the entire data set in a reasonable amount of time, 101 seconds. And so this unlocks the potential of vision transformers in other directions. So I touch on this in my future works where um, I talk about the benefits that I touched on earlier in the approach. So yes, they're more resistant to data and concept drift, which is super important in malware classification because Malware is always evolving, and so this vision transformer has to be able to be, keep up and be able to be resistant to the new families that involve and still classify them accurately. Additionally, interpretability is super important in malware because of how experts want to know why this model came to a certain conclusion. Uh, another part of what differentiates vision transformers from CNNs is that vision transformers become much, much more robust as more and more data is given to it. And so data sets with 10 million or more members, that's just a general number, but 10 million or more members are more uh, beneficial for vision transformers. That's where it can really touch and unlock the strengths of vision transformers for developing or for matching patterns that are near each other in the image and giving it context to solve the problem. I'd like to thank Professor Hussein for giving me this opportunity and for the T master students who acted as his TAs who guided me along every step of the way. Thank you for listening.